Back in April of this year, Childish Gambino made a surprise appearance during Tyler the Creator's Coachella set, in which a lot of people went crazy. Shortly after, on Google Radio, he dropped the news of a finished version of 31520, a heavily cryptic album he released back in 2020 that received very below average results. I do legitimately think some of these tracks deserve a redo, but I can't say I have a desire to return to them in their current state. Feeling a strong fort on this thing? The new final version would go under the name of Ada Vista, and along with this release, a second surprise album and short film would be coming out later this year. The new album, under the name Band of Stone in the New World, Gambino said himself, was for the fans. And despite the overall decent reception of the album, many fans were left sad, not due to the film or the content, but rather the news that this was Gambino's final album. Now before we really get into this, I want to talk about Gambino's discography. Now myself, I'm not the biggest Gambino listener by any means. I enjoy a lot of his records and bigger hits, but I don't think I have enough knowledge by any means to take a deep dive into his career and show you how his collections show any hidden meanings or storylines or something that I might have missed. But I do think from a producer standpoint, I can talk about some of the overall sounds and changes. Now Donald is not a stranger to completely changing his life direction, from acting to writing and rapping, and especially not a stranger to changing his sound. For instance, his first album, Camp, has some of the grittiest and more raw sounds than any of his other albums to present day. Then, immediately after that, in 2013, he dropped undeniably his best album, Because of the Internet. Containing some of his greatest and easily digestible pop and rap hits, the biggest being 3005, a completely new style to him at this time. With this, I would mark this moment as one of the higher, if not the highest moments in his career. Gambino was standing on multiple platinum records and even more to come. And with his time in his career, he decided to literally switch up the flow on everyone by doing what he quoted, making his first big hit. Awaken My Love, an extremely experimental piece containing completely unique and new sounds from Gambino, was the moment where I think everyone realized how truly talented he was. Being able to drop a completely new sound in an entire album to all of your fans during the peak of your career and still being able to make insane numbers is a crazy thing to do. But a couple years later is where, in my opinion, he took it a little too far. In 2020, everyone was at the edge of their seats waiting for the next album. And with expectations high, literally out of nowhere, he dropped 31520. The thing about this album is the music is good and unique, but it was hard as shit to figure out your way around the track list and digest it easily. For most fans, this was the fall off of Gambino, still holding a peak of his career and suddenly dropping it by being too cryptic and shit. Now that brings us to today. With the re-upload of what most call the worst album under a new name and remade tracklist, Gambino drops a new piece, Band of Stone in the New World. Now on first listen, I can hear a lot of inspiration and combinations of past pieces in his final album. He combines the groove of Awaken My Love in many tracks, the more modern and almost Yeezus type sounds from 31520, and some straight up bangers like Because of the Internet. And one of the major new aspects of this album is that it was made to fit his short film coming up soon. So listening to it with his film will also probably bring a lot more to the work itself. Now enough with the music and let's finally get to what you're all probably mad about. Why are you glad it's his last album? Well, I think a lot of people missed the main point of the album. As I stated before, Gambino said this film and album was more for the fans than anyone else. Almost as a parting gift to all who listened to his work over the years. And now here I am saying it's bad because I'm not a diehard fan of Gambino. But a matter of fact, I'm not saying it's bad at all. Gambino said himself in an interview with Hot Ones. I always knew like Childish Gambino was like a character. On some level, I wanted it to end. I feel like the Childish Gambino character is almost like the... Uh, <laughs> like uh, the boss from The Office. It's like, yeah, that worked 10 years ago. Alluding to how his peak of his career was more due to his style at the time, bringing new things that weren't mainstream at the time. But nowadays, that just doesn't work the same way. And in a way, this being the final album is a good thing for Donald, giving him more time to focus on his Atlanta series and other film-focused productions, rather than trying to live up to standards with music these days. And now, not only would this bring more time for Donald himself, but a good ending to the Gambino character. As he said, a Superman ending. So I guess in a way, I'm not saying that I'm glad Donald Glover is stopping music despite the great amount of time it will free up for him, but I'm glad the musical character of Gambino is ending, and in a good way, opposite of many present day artists who disappear in a bad light. Thank you all so much for watching, and let me know anything that I might have skipped out in the comments down below.